President Trump and senior members of the Republican Party are engaged in an assault on democracy in an attempt to hang on to power and undercut the legitimately elected next president, Joe Biden, and they put Rudy Giuliani in charge of their plan. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Look, it's very likely this dumbass coup attempt by Trump and his gang of weirdo, lopsided goons, or as I'm calling them, the kooky, cuckoo coo crew, will succeed. But it's alarming enough that they're trying. And we are finding out right now who in the Republican Party would be willing to go along with an actual coup attempt in the future if, say, an election was much closer, or if they had another chance to accept criminal interference from a foreign country, or if Rudy Giuliani tried to break into a ballot machine to change votes for Trump, only to realize it's a pinball machine at a pizzeria in Yonkers. Boss, great news. I got you 500 more votes and an extra ball. You got the Secretary of State joking about a possible coup, the White House press secretary insisting Trump will remain president, and prominent Fox host straight up demanding that Republicans refuse to accept the results of the election. Is the State Department currently preparing to engage with the Biden transition team? And if not, at what point does a delay hamper a smooth transition or pose a risk to national security? There will be a smooth transition to a second Trump administration. He's left an infrastructure in place uh, where COVID can be handled, um, and we believe that uh, we will do so going forward in a second Trump administration. What I'd like yeah, to know please. is what in the hell is the Republican Party doing to defend and to, I mean, why not just say we're not going to accept the results of this election? I don't know. Why not just say Lou Dobbs should get a head reduction surgery? Or Lou Dobbs looks like a child at a wedding after a million bee stings? Or how does a 75-year-old man have hair the same color as a brand new penny? They're not magic words. It doesn't matter whether you say them or not. You can't go to a doctor's appointment, get an x-ray that shows you have a spoon stuck in your esophagus because you didn't realize it was part of the meal, and then say, I refuse to accept the results of this x-ray. Second, you're lighting American democracy on fire, you fascist bobblehead. The vast majority of Americans accept the outcome of the election and the reality that it was free and fair. But Republicans who listen to your bull are starting to echo your deranged rhetoric about how it was rigged. A poll out today found that about half of Republicans think Trump won the election and it was rigged against him. And look, the people who show up to Trump rallies, you could probably get them to agree with anything Trump says. If you're willing to give up your day to stand in a field and listen to third-rate stand-up comedy from a man who loathes you, you're what they call pliable. Now, as we told you earlier this week, there are some Republican officials who have met the absolute lowest bar by acknowledging that Joe Biden is the president-elect and should be treated as such. Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson said, I expect Joe Biden to be the next president of the United States. And Ohio Governor Mike DeWine said, Joe Biden is the president-elect. Tells you just how sick our political culture is that a Republican official just acknowledging the obvious and legitimate winner of a presidential election is somehow considered a brave, noteworthy act. It's like picking up your morning newspaper and the headline says, yes, this is a newspaper. Don't worry, TV show list and puzzles are on the back. And yet aside from those rare exceptions, many Republican politicians remain in lockstep behind Trump as he continues to pretend he has a path to overturn the election results and declare victory. Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, the same guy who said in March that old people should be willing to die from COVID to keep the economy from shutting down, spelled out Trump's supposed path to victory on Fox News. There's less than 30,000 votes in Georgia and Arizona uh, dividing Biden and Trump. And if those two states turn, if they do, then the Supreme Court could make the decision on Pennsylvania, and then Trump is president. The last plan I heard with that many insane contingencies was my cousin explaining how he's going to pay back that loan. If the lady I dog sit for puts me in her will, and then she dies, and then it goes uncontested by her kids, I'm going to have your money. By the way, Dan Patrick is... Also, the dude who offered a reward of $1 million for evidence of voter fraud in Texas, which I have to say kind of disproves the point you're trying to make. If voter fraud is so common that it could overturn an election, why do you need to offer a million-dollar reward to find some evidence of it? In the Old West, when they offered rewards for outlaws, it was because they were hard to find. They weren't just squatting behind a barrel in the town square. Hey, uh, I think that's Billy the Kid over there. Can I have my, can I have my million now? But anyway, that's their harebrained scheme. They want to somehow flip Arizona and Georgia and then go to court to get Pennsylvania to throw out not just a few ballots, but hundreds of thousands of ballots and have the Supreme Court hand the election to Trump. And apparently in Georgia, 
the guy who's leading the effort, to overturn the results is Congressman Doug Collins. The Georgia Secretary of State, Brad Raffensperger, who's a Republican, went so far as to call Collins a liar and a charlatan. Now, you might remember Collins as the insanely fast-talking person who took a lead role for Republicans during the impeachment proceedings. We've talked about the law, law and broken. They didn't put it in the, the Constitution. So I'm not, I can yell on both of them. I can talk about both of them. I still have not got a transcript. We still don't know what we got. And the White House still has not got their stuff. I was told I couldn't, even though there have been staff conversations well before. I was told I was asking, asking too late. He said, can you, as he said, help us as a country because we're trying to heal. He sounds like he's auctioning off the cocaine from a drug bust after taking a test himself. We got one kilo, we got two kilo, we got five kilo, we got gold blade guns, we got regular guns, we got tiny little guns. Then there's South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham, who, according to Raffensperger, who again is a Republican, called and pressured him to throw out legal ballots. Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger says he's come under increasing pressure in recent days from Republicans intent on questioning the validity of legally cast absentee ballots in an effort to reverse President Trump's loss in the state. In an interview with The Washington Post, Raffensperger said Senator Lindsey Graham asked him on Friday if he had the power to toss out ballots in counties found to have higher rates of non-matching signatures. Raffensperger said he was stunned that Graham appeared to suggest that he find a way to toss legally cast ballots. So Lindsey Graham called up the Secretary of State of Georgia like it was a casual schmooze and said, hey, Brad, want to do brunch? Also, do you have the power to, like, throw out a bunch of legal ballots and hand the election to Trump? Now, according to the Wall Street Journal, there were two phone calls and multiple witnesses who confirmed what Graham said on those calls. And even when Graham tried denying it, he accidentally confessed to something possibly even worse that he'd been calling election officials in other states, too. Or did you not ask him to throw out votes? No, that's ridiculous. I talked to him about how you verify signatures. I'm really worried about mail-in balloting. I'm worried about how you verify a signature. And I think Georgia, I've talked to Doug Ducey in Arizona. I've talked to the people in Nevada. We've got contests all over the nation. So basically, Lindsey Graham called states where Joe Biden won to ask about vote counts. I'd say they were threatening calls, but it's impossible for Lindsey Graham to sound threatening. He has the voice of a guy offering to redo your veranda. I, for one, can't enjoy an iced tea on my porch swing if I'm looking at chip paint. This is the trademark Trump defense. Their only explanation for their bad behavior is more bad behavior. Graham's like an arsonist, defending himself in court by saying, what about all those other houses I burned down? You didn't seem to care about that. Maybe you're the ones who need to look in the mirror. And Lindsay, we might take your word at face value, and I mean might, if you hadn't promised to never support the appointment of a Supreme Court justice in an election year, and then this year when that was put to the test with Amy Coney Barrett, told reporters, I said a fib before, but now I ain't fibbing. Now I'm saying my for real thoughts. So that was their attempt to steal Georgia, and they fell flat on their faces. Then there's Pennsylvania, where the Trump campaign is suing for, you know, reasons. It's impossible to keep track of their bull it's like your mom and dad trying to tell you a story at the same time. So we're at Chili's, right? It was an Applebee's. No, Applebee's was Tuesday. I'm talking about the waiter who dropped the tray. That was an Applebee's. For example, they're all worked up over an electronic voting system called Dominion because there was a small and brief reporting mistake on election night in Michigan. But even the conservative pro-Trump Wall Street Journal editorial board pointed out the unofficial reporting was wrong, but the underlying votes were counted correctly. The printouts from the tabulator showed accurate totals. And in any case, the Michigan Secretary of State's office said the error would have been identified during the county canvas when Democrats and Republicans reviewed the printed totals tape from each tabulator. A Republican county clerk even said there was no malice, no fraud here, just human error. And if anyone should understand human error, it's Trump. I mean, he is a human error. The guy couldn't pronounce the word Yosemite, couldn't figure out how to close an umbrella, and couldn't even get the toilet paper off his shoe after, I guess, taking a giant dump inside the presidential limo. I mean, I get that you don't want to have a transition meeting with Biden, but can you at least give him a heads up that he should get a different ride? Yeah, in regards to the limo, it might be easier just to replace it. Anyway, the claim Trump's teams have been making are so insane, most lawyers want no part of it. The Trump team even tried to delay a hearing in federal court, but as a reporter, for Reuters noted, the judge wasn't having it. A federal judge won't delay tomorrow's hearing on President Trump's lawsuit to overturn the election he lost in Pennsylvania because most of his lawyers quit. His remaining lawyer, who's also a radio host, will have to go it alone and is expected to be prepared. I mean, every word of that tweet is perfect. He wants to overturn 
the results of the state he lost, but his lawyers quit, so he's using a radio host. And the judge actually needed to tell the radio host to be prepared. Of course I'm prepared. I brought my soundboard, Your Honor. This was a fraud to a degree that we should all be alarmed. I rest my case. So then Trump put Rudy Giuliani in charge, and uh, this will probably not shock you. It didn't work out great. For example, yesterday, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court ruled against the Trump campaign and yet another one of their ridiculous lawsuits. Of course, Rudy never made it to the hearing because he accidentally went to the Pennsylvania Supreme Food Court at the King of Prussia Mall. Your Honor, I object. All right, so do you want, like, the chicken teriyaki instead? And then yesterday, reporters and court observers who were covering a Trump campaign case in front of a federal judge in Pennsylvania pulled out individual lines from Rudy's oral arguments, and they're just a delight to read. I mean, here are a few examples of actual legal arguments from Rudy Giuliani. You know the guy who was once, and this is true, the mayor of New York City. One of our biggest cities, the biggest. Those ballots could have been from Mickey Mouse, we have no idea. Mr. The Man, who was very angry at me, I forgot his name. Maybe I don't understand what you mean by strict scrutiny. Incredible. It's like watching a live stream of a wino doing open heart surgery. What the hell is this thing? Why is it moving? That's the heart. Uh, should we put it back in? The term strict scrutiny is one of the most basic legal concepts in all of law, but then if he knew what strict scrutiny was, he'd have gotten his bottom teeth capped as well. If your lawyer says they don't know what strict scrutiny means, then it's, you know, time to get someone new. I mean, that's like if your lawyer got up in court and asked to cross-examine a witness and then asked his questions with his eyes like this. <laughs> this was by far the best exchange and summed up the stupidity of this moronic little coup attempt as much as any moment could. Giuliani, I'm not sure what opacity means. It probably means you can see. Judge Brand, it means you can't. I would love to see Rudy at a spelling bee. The word is opacity. Can you use it incorrectly in a sentence, please? Oh, Rudy. Sweet Rudy, I won't miss Trump, but I also won't miss you. I hope when this is over, you take a well-earned trip to the Bahamas. No, I meant uh, the island. Never mind. Rudy's deranged performance was such an embarrassing debacle that even close Trump ally Mick Mulvaney, Trump's former chief of staff, and a guy who was fully on board with this grotesque attempt to overturn the results of the election, said today, I'm still a little concerned about the use of Rudy Giuliani. Yet last night, after Rudy's disastrous bungling of, you know, everything, Here's what Fox News host Sean Hannity told his audience about Rudy's performance. In Pennsylvania, I, Rudy Giuliani argued the case today. I've heard from more than a few people that he was absolutely brilliant in his arguments today. Maybe he was saying it the way British people use brilliant, to mean funny. Did you see Mr. Bean fall down that escalator into the savory pie display? Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Fun fact, the original title of Hannity's show was Mr. The Man Who Was Very Angry At Me. We're in the midst of several crises colliding at once, the destruction of American democracy, a deadly plague that killed 1,500 Americans just yesterday alone. And we're seeing once again that the Republican Party simply does not care about either. It's an authoritarian movement willing to wreck the American system and stand idly by while Americans die. And even after Trump leaves office, what we're seeing now is that Trumpism will very much remain. At least we can be sure that what we here at Late Night are calling the kooky coo 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 crew will almost certainly fail. And for now, there won't be a second Trump administration. This has been A Closer Look. God's love we deliver cooks and brings over 2 million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button. Stay safe, wash your hands, wear a mask. We love you.